So on this show, we've been talking a lot about how the media is creating this, uh, you know, this fervor for war with Iran. Oh my God, Iran has got missiles and they're about to develop a nuclear weapon. When pressed on it, our intelligence, the intelligence of the international community says they do not have a nuclear weapon. At most, they might have one many years from now. If they try, we're not even sure they're trying, okay? And our intelligence says they're not trying. Our intelligence goes further, okay? And remember, those are the guys that we're supposed to trust more because they're our intelligence, right? right? All of a sudden, by the way, the Republicans are like, oh, the UN, the IAEA, we trust them more. Wait a minute, I thought you hated the UN, right? <laughs> because we planted a guy at the IAEA to say, yeah, oh yeah, totally, neocons are right. Iran might have a weapon some decade, okay? Right. So now, what was interesting in this second stage of this story is the pushback. One, the administration has done a very interesting job of pushing back on this issue that we're gonna discuss in a second. But you know what? So many current and former Mossad chiefs have come out saying, hey, you know what? Don't do it, this is not a good idea. There, even one yesterday that we quoted saying Mitt Romney talking about how Iran has a nuclear weapons program when they don't is very dangerous because it could motivate Iran to have a yeah. nuclear weapons program. So when a former Mossad chief from Israel says, oh my God, you, as you hype up this war, Iran's gonna panic and say, well, if I only have nine months before a Republican gets elected and I know they're gonna attack me for sure, well, then I gotta get a nuclear weapons right. program yeah, to deter We're it. in a hurry right, right now, Right, yeah. right. So now here comes another former head of Israeli intelligence, and he's gonna go on 60 Minutes, and, and a great job by 60 Minutes in covering this the accurate way and finding this gentleman. Let's watch. ...said publicly that bombing Iran now is the stupidest idea you've ever heard. That's a direct quote. An attack on Iran before you uh, exploring all other approaches is not the right way how to do it. The dispute seems to come down, though, to whether you are at the end of everything that you can try, or whether you have a lot of time left to try other things, which seems to be your position. I never said that it's a lot of time, but I think that... Well, more time. More time. So, I love how blunt he is. Yeah. He's like, this is a dumb idea. And why does he say that? Because he's Weak? <laughs> no. No, no, no. Okay. No. Here's what the uh, heads of uh, Mossad are not, which is weak yeah. or want to encourage the enemies of Israel. There is no, no fear. I mean, they don't operate from any kind of position of fear whatsoever. Mossad, uh, they're the ones that are gung-ho that are going into everything. So right. They, so he, the reason he says that is because he thinks it would hurt Israel if you started this unnecessary war. And he knows because he was there. Now, there's a second part to this. Let's watch that as well. Okay. The regime in Iran is a very rational regime. Do you think Ahmadinejad is, a, is rational? The answer is yes. Not exactly our rational, but I think that he is rational. Do so you think they're rational enough that they are capable of backing down from this? No doubt that the, the Iranian regime is maybe not exactly rational based on what I call Western thinking. But no doubt that they are considering all the implications of their action. So uh, he, the reason why that this is a, a, even a conversation about whether they're rational or not is because the neocons in this country and in Israel are saying, no, er everybody in Iranian leadership is just absolutely nuts. None of them are sane at all. So if they have a nuclear weapon, well, obviously it'd be insane to fire it because Israel and the U.S. would obliterate, obliterate them with far more nuclear weapons, they endanger their population of 70 million people. So they say, oh no, no, they don't consider that because they're all insane. And then so you have people like the former Mossad chief and our intelligence chief and our head of our military coming out and saying, of course they're rational actors, they're human beings. They're not, no, they don't want all of their population to die instantly, including themselves, by doing such a stupid thing. Doesn't mean that we want them to have nuclear weapons, no. of course not. And he re but they're I mean, not he gonna also, immediately launch that. He reframed what rational is a little bit there too, but you know, he's talking about Western rational and they're kind of muddy rational. But, but yeah, it's interesting, of course he's a Mossad person, so you never know 
if he's saying what he believes or what he thinks is the best thing to do because he's a spy. Uh, so I mean, I think that there, I mean, there's something to be. I, I'm very, I'm very serious about that. Like a former Mossad chief goes on with the tacit approval of a lot of other people. He's not like some rogue guy who's sitting down with Leslie Stahl for no reason. You know? And there, we've quoted four current and former Mossad chiefs on the show, all against the Iran war. Right. That's not an accident. No, it's not. Okay. It's a lot of people within the military and intelligence community of Israel saying, put the frickin' brakes on. What are you doing? And so there's a question about Netanyahu's stability here as his commanders on the ground try to reel him back in. Yeah, he seems like a very unstable leader right now. And then when you, you know, we have other things that we probably won't get to, but Sipi Livni, the head of the opposition in Israel, and, and the way they're trying to now frame uh, Netanyahu and his leadership, that they think that he is more dangerous to Israel. Of course, they're the opposition, but there are a lot of people in the world now in the Mossad here uh, who think that Netanyahu is more dangerous to Israel than Iran is. Yeah, and, and it's because if you start an unnecessary war, you don't know what the results are going to be. Yeah. I mean, then all of a sudden Hezbollah might attack you from Lebanon. You might have Hamas might get riled up in the Gaza Strip. Now you've had Arab Spring all over the place. Do you know what Egypt's going to do? Not necessarily. No. Do you have any idea what Syria is going to do? Well, they're only they're doing it to themselves. They don't right. worry about Israel right now. Right, yeah. but God knows, of right? Course, yeah. What what could result because of that? And in the middle of this incredibly tumultuous time, you're going to light a powder keg. 